Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next uh, Airspeed Plays TCG video. This is going to be part 3, Card Fight Vanguard. And obviously this is the second of the th four main games I'm going to be uh, kind of covering in detail here. And yeah, I'm just going to go through it in more or less the same way as I went through the Pokemon video. So expect a video, same length, same sort of format. So um, obviously let's start off with some bit of introduction on this game since of all of the games I'm covering here, this is probably the one you've, if you're completely not into card games, you've probably never heard of. And this is far and away the newest card game of all of these. I believe it's only been out in Japan like two, three years. And in terms of it coming to like yeah, American slash European markets, um, I'm pretty sure it's just over like a year, year and a half type thing. So it's gradually getting more and more popular. It's still a little bit hard to get in that like, more than likely, you probably won't see many of these in uh, in stores anywhere. I had to order mine off Amazon. Um, but yeah, it's getting more and more popular. I think as more and more people get away from like Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic and stuff like that, they turn to this because um, there's some very interesting st things about the game, as I'll talk about later on. There is an anime and a manga about this game also. Um, I've watched a couple of episodes. It's interesting enough. It's, um, you know, it's more of the whole thing of like, literally they're playing the game and they go to tournaments to play the game it's not like Yu-Gi-Oh where there's a big kind of thing about it like they were real the monsters were real in the past and like magic and stuff like that it, it's focused on it being a card game but um it's interesting enough to, it, it, it's probably an easy way to teach you how to play the game just watching the first, the first few episodes of the anime but um yeah it's uh, interesting enough so I'll start off um as ever with um Coming at this game from a kind of beginner perspective, what sort of um, products are available if you're first getting into Card Fight Vanguard? So, first of all, the first thing you'll come across will be this, which is a, a trial deck, which is basically Card Fight Vanguard's equivalent of a starter deck, intro pack, or whatever. And like all of these games I'm going to cover today, it is one deck. It has the exact number of cards you need, 50 has a kind of rule book, uh, simple rule book, as well as a kind of play mat, and just is the perfect way to get started with the game. You know, you get a couple of shiny cards and a deck that's kind of built to do th uh, to kind of just get you into the game. Now, the the weak thing with Card by Vanguard is that these trial decks are actually reasonably good in the actual game, so you can actually beat really well constructed decks with just a trial deck, maybe changing only a few cards, and um, it's, kind of, it's not actually too bad. Um, you know, the packaging is very basic, tells you what you get in it, there's a card list on the bottom, so on, some nice art, very simple packaging, but um, yeah, but that's what you get in a, that's a starter deck, starter deck, trial deck, um, there's a bunch of them available as ever, they release you know, two every few months, three every few months, and um, this is the fifth one. I think this is the second starter deck for the main character, who is this guy here. Um, and yeah, but um, what else is available? Uh, Card Fight Vanguard actually has quite a limited selection of what's available. There's trial decks, there's one mega trial deck, which is basically the same thing, but you get card sleeves and some other kind of additional stuff as well. Um, so there's nothing, not too much, as well as obviously booster packs, which... Um, the thing about the booster packs in Card by Vanguard is that um, there's only five cards in the pack. You get four commons and a rare and stuff like that. But we'll talk about the rarities later on. Um, and obviously booster boxes as well. Nothing like a kind of tin where you can get promo cards or anything like that. Special sets or stuff like that. So definitely of all of these games has the most limited product right now. All that's available is starter decks, booster packs. That's it, and obviously booster boxes if you want that. But um, yeah, let's uh, get into some of this. Uh, now I'm just gonna open this up, show you what you kind of get in a starter set, and then I'll show you what the cards do. Then I'll kind of show you how to set up the game and some of the game mechanics. And same way as the Pokemon video from before. So you, know, you get you get the game in this you know plastic box. You just take the back off. There's the. Uh, this is the like advanced rule book. This is just it's a big it's a kind of black and white thing, just goes through everything, tells you every step, every activation timing and all this sort of stuff. You can read that if you want. The game's a lot simpler than that rule book makes it seem. 
which is where this um, simpler, kind of easier to follow colour with uh, illustrations comes in and just teaches you how to play easy enough and you know, if you switch it around to the other side you've got um, icons and stuff like that uh, it tells you everything you need to know basically so it's uh, reasonably nice to give you a, a more advanced and a simple uh, setup for the game there's also this uh, play mat that you get here you know it's just paper folded up has your t turn order different uh, zones of the game as well as the cards themselves so uh, I have my cards in sleeves because these are, these are the only card my Vanguard's cards I have right now and I don't want them to get damaged. But there's a card, you know, you get uh, 50 cards in the set, uh, constructed for a deck. There's only, I think there's only 16 actual different cards in the set, in this starter set, because there's multiples of loads of them. Like, most of them you get four of, some of them there's two of, and there's a few that there's only one of, but um, th that's the whole thing. and. Uh, Basically what I'm going to demonstrate it to you after I show you the different types of cards is I split it in half as equally as I could, like the Pokemon deck, and you know, there's 25 cards here, 25 cards over there, and I'll show you the setup next. Okay, so I'm back now, I'm going to show you the different types of cards. So, um, as you can see, I have most of my cards in sleeves, but I just took this one out to show you that, um, you know, that little shiny thing is just part of the uh, card sleeve. Um, this is one of the cards. That's what the back of a card by Vanguard card looks like. Really cool, actually. Um, probably my favorite of the back of card designs of any of these um, uh, card, uh, different cards I'm going to be reviewing. But um, yep, here is one of the cards. As you can see, overall they just look really nice. R most of the card is made up of the art, which is different than everything else of uh, all the other card games I've covered. You can see there's a lot of symbols all over it. Um, bit of the kind of uh, flavor text here, the name, type of unit, numbers, and different types. So I'll just kind of go through that now, uh, now in a minute. So yeah, that's just one of the cards, and I'll come back to that one later. But for now, the main thing you need to know about Card Fight Vanguard is that there's fundamentally only one type of card, and they are units. So there's no like magic cards, spell cards, trap cards, and stuff like this. They're all basically the monsters of this game. So the main different ones are just that, you know, there's a grade zero unit, which is this one, as you can see there from the zero. There's a grade one here, grade two, and grade three. And that's just basically, you know, when you start the game, you have a grade zero, you have to kind of rank it up to grade one, two, and three to gradually increase your power. Now, for the most part, you know, there's a little, there's a bit of a difference between the uh, grade zeros compared to the rest, and that's because, as you can see from this yellow border, these are di these units are slightly different. This one, as you can clearly see here, says normal unit, while this one says trigger unit, and that's what makes these ones different. Um, there is one type of uh, grade zero unit that's just a normal unit, and that's like this one. It's just standard. You can see the main difference between them is that. This uh, normal unit doesn't have anything up in the top right corner, and that's because you know that signifies that that's a trigger. And now there are four different types of trigger in the game. Let me just organize these. So as you can see there, there's a draw trigger, there's a stand trigger, there's a critical trigger, and there's a heal trigger. Fundamentally, they're all more or less the same. As you can see, they've got five thousand. They've got. Uh, the only difference is that this one, this one here has 5,000 uh, shield, this one's 10,000, and so on. But um, basically, you need to have 16 of these cards in your deck. Uh, the only kind of real rule to it is that you can only have four heal triggers because they keep the game going on a long time if you're allowed to have 16 of them. But um, only four of each card per deck, any card, so you can only have four of this, this card, and specifically you can only have four heal triggers, you know. So you're allowed to have as uh, many of the 16 as you want, you know, the remaining 12 be critical triggers. So you could have 12 cri cri critical triggers if you want, and so on. And uh, I'll explain where these trigger cards come into play later on. But for the most part, all you need to know is that, you know, they all give f 5,000 uh, extra. And then your know, critical trigger draw is you draw a card. Stand is you basically are allowed to attack again with one of your units. 
Uh, critical means the attack here goes up one, so you'll do two damage to your opponent instead of uh, one. And then heal heals one damage off you. Uh, and that's the main thing with that. Um, and then the only other real thing to just mention is um, <laughs> some of the kind of different effects. You see here it says auto, and uh, you know, there are auto effects. You can see there's the attack there, 6,000 attack. Um, this one has 8,000 attack. And this one has 10,000 attack, one critical. All, I think every unit has one critical and they start off. And you see it says here gold paladin human. Gold paladin is the type of deck that this is. And you know, any card you get in packs that are gold paladin easily go into this deck because um, there's a lot of effects here that reference gold paladin like this one. Choose another one of your gold paladins, and that gets 2,000 extra attack, and so on. That's basically the game, and then the only other important thing here to note is this bar here on the side of the card, and that's a shield kind of thing, and this is 5,000 shield, and that will come in handy later on. Um, one final thing to note is that um, basically um, only grade zeros, ones, and twos uh, actually have uh, shield. So you can see this grade 3 doesn't have any. Um, and then for the most part, um, only some of the the grade zeros actually have 10,000 shield. And the only difference would be the draw triggers, which all have 5,000 shield. And, you know, obviously your grade 1s have 5,000, grade 2s have 5,000. I think there is no 10,000 of those ones. But um, final thing to mention is just... Uh, Coming back to the uh, grade zero, ones, twos, threes, and some of the other differences is um, this little symbol here underneath the uh, grade. Now, basically, grade ones and twos are kind of have the same symbol, and that means that's a boost symbol, which means if these are in the kind of uh, rear rear of zone of the game, which I'll explain in a minute, that these boost your um, units. Um, the grade twos have this symbol here, which is an intercept symbol, which means that if these are on the in the in your front row, these can actually guard as just like the other cards can guard from your hand. So that's a special effect they have. And then the grade threes have this symbol here, which is called twin drive, which allows them to uh, kind of uh, drive check twice. Which is, again, I'll explain in a minute. So, yep, uh, that's everything I think I need to tell you about the cards. Uh, one final thing is just then. Uh, there's a there's a lot of symbol kind of stuff in this game instead of uh, text. So, you know, auto, you know, that's that that symbol means uh, rear guard. That symbol means vanguard. And then th this symbol here means counter blast. This symbol means uh, soul blast. And I'll explain all those as I go through the game mechanics, but as you can see, they're really nice looking cards and um, big variety of art in terms of, you know, there's kind of humans, there's animals, you know, stuff like this. And there, there's a huge variety ranging from, you know, warriors to just kind of like a more anime kind of type of stuff. And it, it's really interesting. There's even some cute stuff in some of the other um, kind of categories of the game. But uh, yeah, let's get into uh, how you actually play this game. Okay, so here, uh, I've basically set up the opponent's side of the field. And I'm going to show you how I set up uh, this side of the field here. Um, the main thing you do when you start a game is obviously you have your deck. In this case, you know, it's uh, half of what it should be. It's, every deck has to be 50 cards, no more, no less. In this case, I split it in half, you know, 25 each. But really what you do at the start of a game is you actually choose one of your grade zero units from your deck and you make that act as your vanguard, hence the name of the game, Cardfight Vanguard. Um, uh, and in this case, I've chosen for the other person the uh, the non-trigger grade zero unit. That way, you know they have more triggers to use during the game, which uh, comes in helpful. But uh, I'm just going to choose this um, this one here, which is a stand trigger, because they're not as useful as the other triggers in the game. So it's no it's no kind of harm really um, messing up that. And then you place them as your vanguard in the set, in the vanguard circle, as you can see here. There's six circles. Vanguard, and then the rest of them are called rear guard circles. And then it's not marked here on the map, but basically you have your front row, your back row, and then you know three three columns, vanguard column, and then 
rear guard columns. But for the most part, that's all you need to know. And you can, uh, I'll, I'll explain how you play kind of as you as we go forward. But your vanguard is never going to be destroyed during the game. That's a key point to note. Your rear rear guards can be destroyed. But uh, yeah, let's get into this um, now. So you've chosen your your vanguards. Both of the both of you are ready. And then let's just say I go first. You you each draw five cards um, into your hand. And then you actually are allowed, as part of the rules of the game, a mulligan, which is basically a do-over in your hand, but it's very specific in that you have to put as many cards from your five-card hand back into your um, deck and then draw that many out again. So in terms of strategy in Card Fight Vanguard, you don't want to have really many other grade zeros in your hand at the start of a game. In this case, we have three, so we're just going to put those three back into the deck. Doing this on camera is really awkward, so... There we go. Uh, and then we draw three new cards. And then you're not allowed to do it again, basically. You can't just uh, keep do over multiple times. So this worked out better for us. We only got one trigger unit and so on. So uh, basically, since it's my first turn, I can't attack, obviously. So that's one of the kind of things out of the uh, game. Um, so what you are allowed to do, first of all, as you can see here from the order of a turn, is stand phase, draw phase. Um, so that's our first thing. We draw a card. And look, there's a grade three. So that's good. We have grade ones, twos, and threes in our hand. So that's uh, very handy. And then um, ride phase. Now, this is basically one of the keys to this game. This is your vanguard, and this is the only thing that you can ride other cards on. So this is a grade zero, and the only way to actually ride or like level up this thing is to go up one rank. Like you can't put a grade two or three on it you have to put a grade 1 on it. So in this case we're going to put the, this one on it, uh, who is obviously Blessing Owl, and you just put it straight over the top. The card that's uh, under your vanguard is called part of its soul, which is another kind of mechanic of the game. You use the cards in the soul. But uh, for the most part it's just that this is the new card. This is your new, <laughs> new vanguard. And then what you're allowed to do is that now that you have a grade 1 on the field, you're allowed to call as many other grade 1s or below to your uh, rear guard circles in whichever position you want. And this is where some of the strategy of the game comes into play in that your level 1s and zeros can boost your uh, cards in your first front row. So you want to put them there and then, you know, you can do it from there. Uh, so. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this grade zero, since it's not going to be much use to me doing anything else, I'm going to put it in the rear guard zone behind my vanguard uh, so I can boost later on. And then I'm going to put this card into this zone here. And this all works because I have a grade one vanguard so I can use grade one cards for the rest of the kind of uh, things to do. So. Um, yeah, that's uh, all I can really do for now in my turn, and then you know, just keep the rest of the cards in your hand for later on. And then none of the effects can activate right now because the game hasn't really, nothing's really happened in the game yet. So, um, yeah, and you know, your, your opponent then does the exact same. You know, they, they ride their vanguard to level it up, they put other cards into play, and so on. I'm not really doing much strategy on this side of the board, but uh, there you can see more or less what's done. Like there, they've got more cards than us on the field now, and you know they can now attack. For easiness sake, I'm just going to switch to my turn and show you how we attack. So I drew a card, I play it here, and I can also... No, wait, before that, you have to do your ride phase first. So I ride to phase two, and then you can also put other number two cards in play now. But say I wanted to, for instance, um, uh, put a grade two card here or something like that. So say I wanted to put that one here. You are actually allowed to move cards up and down the zones, except in your vanguard, because your vanguard has to stay there. So here and here, you're allowed to just switch, switch the positions of these two cards or, this, or positions like that. Um, if your zones are already, like, say, clogged up, you can actually just put a card once it's uh, w one you're able to use onto this zone, but you have to basically destroy the card below it and put it in your discard pile, which is called a drop zone in this game. But for, now, for this kind of strategy, I'm just going to put this 
grade 2 here and this grade 0 here. And then I've got the grade 3 ready for next turn. Now, here's where um, you're re ready to attack. You've called all your rear guards, you've already um, leveled up your uh, vanguard, and now you're ready to attack. So, what you do is, um, in terms of strategy, um, I usually prefer to attack with the other units first before the vanguard. So, um, how it works is basically you decide, okay, who's going to attack first? You can only attack with units in your front row. The ones in the back are just there for support. So I'll just, uh, for easing the sake, I'm going to use this guy. So he has 8,000 attack, and it says here in the, in the thing, if, if the, his, his effect is, if the number of cards in your hand is less than your opponent's, this unit gets 3,000 attack. We have the same amount of cards in our hand, so I'm just going to decide, okay, I'm going to attack. And what you do is just turn the card sideways, and, then, you know, I'm attacking with this. And then you can choose any one of your opponent's card in the front row to attack. And this is where you have to compare the powers. This has 8,000 power, and you compare it to your opponent's power here. So this is a 6,000, 6,000, and 7,000. Um, so what you do here is, I'm just gonna say, okay, I'm attacking this, for example. This is not, this is not the vanguard, this is your, my opponent's vanguard. I'm just gonna attack this. And now, from what they're allowed to do is they're allowed to play kind of what's called uh, guardians to shield their uh, monsters if they want. Now he only has one card in his hand, which is a grade two. Now the the rules also apply to what cards in your hand as well. He only has a grade one vanguard, so he can't use a grade two guard. But if he did have grade two, he'd be allowed to use this card to shield, which has five thousand shield, as you can see. And what you would do if he was able to use the card was you put it here in the guardian circle and you just say like you know, shield 5000 and then you go 5000 plus this card's attack which is 6000 which is obviously 11000 is uh, more than 8000 and so he doesn't get destroyed here but in this case he can't use that so instead the attack does go through and this card's destroyed and goes to the drop zone um, so then we switch to this card, and this is where I can show you off the uh, boosting effect. So say, okay, this thing only has 5,000 attack, which isn't enough to take out either 7,000 or 6,000. So what you do is say, okay, I'm going to attack with this, and I'm going to boost with this one, because it has that little boost symbol there, as all ze grade zeros and grade ones have. And so you also turn the one in the rear guard back uh, sideways. And so... You can only boost the card directly in front of you. You can't, like, say, boost over this way. You have to boost the card in front of you. So it's 5,000 plus 5,000 now, which means 10,000 attack. And in this case, we're actually going to attack the Vanguard. And now this is how you do damage in this game. So, okay, 10,000 attack versus 6,000 attack. This, uh, this attack is going through. So they could, if they wanted to, shield again, play a card from their hand. But in this case, they're not going to do that because, as I said, they have a grade 2. They can't guard with this just yet. So they're taking the damage. And now what they have to do is perform what's called a damage check. And now this is the big kind of new uh, mechanic in Cardfight Vanguard. This is what makes the game very unique compared to everything else. So uh, let me just get the card in the hand out of the way. Now what they do is from the top of their deck, you're doing damage to them. They do a damage check and it goes like, they take the top card of their deck and put it in what's called a trigger zone. In this case, it's just in front of your deck, so I'm doing it here. And now this is the card that they got. And conveniently, it is actually a trigger. Now, in this case, it doesn't matter that much because it's a damage check. But basically, say they got a heal damage check, they'd actually be able to heal and take damage, meaning they have neutral damage. But... Um, if they got a draw trigger, they actually be allowed to draw a card while taking damage. So that's the importance of these, and that even when you take damage, you um, get some sort sort of an advantage. The five thousand attack happens after the damage goes through, so there's nothing happening there. So what you happens and says, okay, this stand trigger can't trigger because there's no no cards to stand. Standing a card is basically taking it from rest to standing, basically. Uh, that's the terminology. So in this case, the card just goes straight to the damage zone over here. Now, in this case, you know, if I was doing it to myself, you just put it sideways. 
and you win the game by putting six damage in your um, in your zone, basically. So in this case, he has now as one damage. If I forced him to damage check six times, I'd win the game. And there's also some stuff that uses the fact that this card is over here now. But uh, anyway, yeah, I can still attack once again with my Vanguard this time, and I have a card to boost it. So attack boost, and in this case, it's ten thousand plus five thousand, which is uh, 15,000 obviously and what you do here is okay your opponent can't guard they get a chance to guard first he doesn't so the attack is going through anyway but because it's my vanguard attacking I get to perform what's called a drive check which is like a damage check except this actually is more useful I can use more of the effects and what you do is you flip the top card from your deck over into the trigger zone and if it's a trigger, it activates and does stuff. You know, you, this is where the 5,000 attack applies. In this case, I didn't get a, um, a um, trigger card. But the key thing here is that while a damage check goes to the damage zone and damages you, a drive check goes straight to your hand. So this is a good way to draw. And so you should always really attack with your vanguard during your turn if possible. And so this card goes to my hand and he takes one damage. And so he damage checks again. In this case, he gets a heal trigger. Now this is interesting here. This is how this works. So he's taking one damage. In the trigger zone, the heal trigger activates. So this damage goes away into the damage zone, but this takes the place of that damage now. And so that's how heal triggers work. They, only, they also only work when you have equal to or more damage than your opponent. So in this case, it was... Um, he had one damage, so it worked, and so there's that case. So if you're in the lead and have one damage and your opponent has five, you can't heal your one damage. But um, um, let me show you now the, how you actually guard in this game. We couldn't do it with the last turn, but we can do it this turn. So let's just say, okay, my opponent rides, rides to uh, grade two. They play this card to boost, and they add... They keep that card there. They also have grade 3 in their hand now. But, let's say, okay, they're going to attack, and... Oh wait, I can actually show you one of these effects now. This effect, I don't know if you can quite see it, but it says activate when this card is in the vanguard or the rear guard. Counter blast 1, this card gets 1000 attack until the end of the turn. So, what do you do to counter blast? So, you say, okay, before I attack, I'm going to counter blast. And what you do there is, you go to your damage zone and you go, okay, so my damage zone is flipped up, counter blast 1 means flip it face down. And now this card gets 1000 attack, and, you know, it's now 8000. So, it go, you go to your attack phase and, you know, 7000 boosted by 5000 is 12000, and they decide that they're going to attack my vanguard to do some damage to me. Now, I only have 10,000 kind of defense here, so what I can do is, from my hand, because I have a grade 2 in play, I can actually guard with this, which is a grade 2, uh, and I can, you know, put the shield down here. And what this does is basically, it means he only has 12,000 attack, my defense now goes from 10,000 to 10,000 plus the 5,000 shield here which means 15,000, and so I don't take damage, which means that just my, my, my shield goes to the graveyard, and his attack is done, basically. And, you know, going back to the counter blast for a second, you can, there are cards that let you kind of uh, reverse counter blast and like flip your cards back the other way, and that's where kind of healing comes into play, and in that you're allowed to choose which um, damage you take off, so for the most part, you take off the counter-blasted already ones to get new damage in there. And so you can counter-blast more things. But, anyway. And then, you know, this is how the game goes back and forth, you know. Now he attacks with his uh, Vanguard, and it's uh, 8,000 plus 5,000, 13,000. Uh, I don't have anything left on my hand to guard with. So he drive-checks because it's his Vanguard attacking. This is in the trigger, but it goes to his hand. And then... I take damage, so I do a damage check, and I get a heal trigger, but since I have no damage, it doesn't work, so it just goes straight to my damage zone. 
and this is how it goes back and forth. The strategy of this game comes into play when you're deciding, okay, the fields are getting really full right now, you know, five on my field, four on his field. Do I start taking out some of his rear guards so he can't attack me as much, but maybe waste, maybe not get as much damage on him, and maybe let him fill his uh, field the next turn with his hand? Or do I just go straight for the vanguard every single turn? That's where the strategy of this game is. And I gotta say, I love the fact that there's no need to, for anything else, there's no need for counters, there's no need for, like, paper to count life points or anything like that. The damage is used, uses the cards, the cards all just link together. All you need is, you don't even need the mat, all you need is the decks, the cards, and I lo love that the that's the way the game works. But, uh, yeah. And uh, something I didn't quite mention, but, you know, what's that stand phase? What's the first thing? So, okay, I've attacked last turn, he's just ended his turn, so you go to first part of your turn is stand, which means all my cards have already attacked, so I'm allowed to stand them up again, so they can, are available to attack for me this turn as well. And as you can see, you know, your vanguard gradually gets filled with part of its soul, and then you can use um, cards that activate that. Um, but okay, it's my turn, I draw, and look, I got another grade 3 which is convenient. So I'll actually just go straight to that, ride to grade three, and then you can also do this. So, um, you know, I want to say I want to, okay, I want to play this grade three, uh, but my field's a bit full. I want to use this thing to attack because it's got 10,000 damage, but I've got a level, a grade two over here, and he can't boost me because he's a grade two, he only has intercept, so I actually want to keep him there. So. I don't want to put him here either, so it means I have to put him here somewhere. And then it just comes down to, okay, which one do I want to get rid of? They're both um, reasonably good, but you know the the this card is a grade one, so that's better. So I, I, what I do is I'd switch the position of these two, and then retire this unit and put this one in its place. And that's basically all you do to kind of switch units. <laughs> It just goes straight to the graveyard, and then, you know, you, I don't think you'd do it that often, like just out and out retire your units, because it's kind of wasting a card and not having your opponent take it out. But still, yep, that's what you do. And then I have some effects here in play where I can counter blast as well, like this one has a counter blast one, get 3000 when I'm attacking, and so on. And this is where the effects kind of come into play somewhat as I said, when this unit attacks and so on, and that's how the game plays out. Um, one final thing I'll mention here now is the effect of grade 3s. As I said, it's called uh, twin drive or dual drive or whatever. Now this is, it only works for vanguard, so that's the kind of plus of uh, putting a kind of vanguard grade 3 there. So what you do is just say, okay, so let's say I'm going to attack with my vanguard first this time. And my opponent actually can block this turn because they have something here. So, okay, I'm going to attack, I'm going to boost. So 10,000 plus 5,000, 15,000, and I'm attacking their vanguard, which only has 8,000 defense. Now, even if they wanted to, they could only shield for 5,000, so there's actually no point in them shielding this turn. So that means I go. they skip their um, guard step, and I go straight to my drive check. So... First one activates, twin drive basically means you do this twice, once after the other. First one activates, nothing, this card goes to my hand. Second one activates, nothing, goes straight to my hand. But this is really good if you're kind of up against a really powerful card or something like that. Because you could potentially get like two draw triggers, meaning that you would draw four cards and gain 10,000 attack, which is pretty amazing. But that's how the game works. It's very easy. There's a few kind of like issues around timing about when you can activate certain effects and stuff like that, um, timing on certain things. But for the most part, it's very, very easy to play this game. Um, I'll mention, I think, one final thing I need to mention, and that's just the effect of grade 2 units intercept. So let's just say um, that there's the board. They're ready to attack, so... I so said they're attacking uh, my vanguard with this uh, unit here, so that's 
8,000 plus 5,000, 13,000, and they're attacking this thing, which is only has 10,000. So they're going to hit me. But I don't have any cards in my hand to guard against this thing, and I don't want to take damage this turn. I can actually, instead, when it comes to my guard phase, I can actually use one of my grade 2 units that's in the front row to intercept, because they've got this uh, symbol here, which means intercept. And what that just means is that you can actually just take it from your uh, front row and just put it into the guardian circle to guard. So 10,000 plus the 5,000 shield that this thing has is enough to block that attack. But, you know, that means you're sacrificing when your attacker is basically doing that. But it's good for a kind of last line of defense type thing, which is uh, good. But that's how the game kind of progresses. Um, it, uh, if you get a critical trigger, what it means is that um, your critical here, which is one on every card, goes up to two and you do two damages. So when you do when that hits, your opponent performs two damage checks um, and stuff like that. A stand trigger, uh, I'll just briefly mention, uh, which is like this one, stand trigger. If you do that during your drive check, what you're allowed to do is, um, for instance, say I've just attacked with my vanguard, I've done this. You're only you're not allowed to use the stand on your vanguard, but you're allowed to use it on one of your rear guards. So you've just finished your attack. This is already attacked. You can actually stand this again. It doesn't stand the rear guard, the kind of one that boosted it, but it does stand this again. So I could attack again for ten thousand, and that's where stand triggers come into play, um, which is nice. Um, and that's why sometimes it's better to attack with your vanguard first, and most of the time you probably would. There's a few times you maybe wouldn't, but um, there's a nice level of strategy in the game. Um, the problem is um, perhaps that um, a lot of the cards are very similar in this game, in terms of like every single one of the kind of teams, like Gold Paladin or whatever, they all have very similar cards. Like nearly all triggers have 5,000 or 6,000 attack, um, and they all you know have the same type of uh, triggers. All units have 5,000 defense, or all, all units shield for 5,000 or 10,000. And then even the powerful cards, all of them have around 9,000, 10,000. Some of them have 11,000, and I think there's a couple of cards that have 12,000. But there's not a huge level of variety in the numbers in this game. Which means that this is basically responsible for why this trial deck, for instance, has the potential to beat probably the best constructed deck out there that's winning tournaments. Just because of how, like, um, to the point um, all of these cards are. They're all very similar. And the only real difference would be that um, a kind of constructed deck has a lot more effects in it and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, that's basically everything that I need to explain about the game, I think. Um, uh, there's some cards have the ability Soul Blast, and um, that's just kind of signified by something like this, which is just a V, and it's saying like an arrow coming out of it. And like to activate that, it says, uh, take two cards out of your Soul, so soul Blast 2. Um, when this unit is placed on a rear guard, if you have Gold Paladin Vanguard, you can may pay the cost if you do draw a card. So you'd activate that only from your hand. You place it down and decide, okay, I'm going to activate this. So... I have, in my soul, I have, you know, three cards. So there's my grade zero, my one, and my two. So I have three cards in my soul. It doesn't include the card that's on the top because you can't sacrifice that. So you take two of these away. I'll just take the bottom two. Put them in your drop zone. And then that effect activates, which means you draw a card. But yeah, that's the game. There's nothing else I really need to mention. It's very easy, I think it's easy to get a hang of. There's a few um, slightly confusing things in that, like, you probably will consult the rule book the first few times you play a game, just to get some details on, like, what happens and stuff like that. Um, like, for instance, the heal thing that I just explained to you, like, when you take a uh, damage check, a heal, you know, the key point is to remember there's a trigger zone, so you know, the, the heal doesn't happen, the, the card doesn't go there straight away, it actually stays here before you take the damage, you heal, 
the damage away and then you do the damage like th there's a few things like that you really have to just think it through but um that's the game yeah uh next i'm going to talk about uh, rarities in this game and then you know get into some metagame discussion and stuff like that okay so i'm going to talk a little bit about rarities now I just pulled out some of the shinies that you get in this um deck and explain some of the stuff so obviously most of the cards in the sets are going to be commons and that just means that they don't have anything shiny about them they're just cards there's no uncommons in this game there's just commons and then shinies so a typical booster pack is um five cards which is interesting and what you get is four commons and then one rare double rare, triple rare, or SP. They're the different rarities in this game. Now, the starter decks don't like list the rarity. Like usually um, the cards would have like, I think it would say like a C after the set name, but in, since it's a starter deck, trial deck, they don't have them here. But this would usually have a C. These two here are actually um, like just rares, single rares. You can sort of see that they're shiny. It's not the best. Uh, to pick up but uh, it's got a weird kind of checkered pattern on it that's sort of shiny and uh, this is this would be just a single rare and it's a grade one this is a single rare as well and it's got a slightly different pattern it's a uh, kind of a diamondy but it's also got a checkered pattern sort of as well that's also a single rare and then the best card in this uh, set would be a double rare which is this card and you can really see that this one is shiny and it's got a nice kind of flaky kind of effect on it. So that's all green and shiny. Um, that would be a double rare. There is triple rares, which again, you know, is just signified by the three ores there would be at the bottom. And again, it's kind of just even shinier. And then there's an SP, which as far as I'm aware, is one per every like between six and ten boxes. You get one SP and they're just like super shiny. Um, um, there's nothing like specifically like you can tell that like this is an SP, this is a rare, double rare. They're just like different levels of shiny and then <laughs> they're, you can tell. Like Yu-Gi-Oh! it's very easy to tell like that's a rare, that's a ultra rare <laughs> and so on. But in this case it's just like, oh you can sort of tell the difference between a rare and a double rare. But then the difference between the rest of them aren't that uh, wide. Um, other than that, the only thing to mention is that um, metagame type stuff, and um, the main thing to say about metagame is that, like I said, trial decks are actually can actually be really good in like tournaments and stuff like that because the h super powerful decks are built in roughly the same way as this kind of deck is. A typical deck consists of about seventeen grade zeros. Obviously, your um your 16 triggers that you need plus one more to act as your starting vanguard um you probably have about 15 um grade ones and then around 10 grade twos and eight grade threes that's the typical rundown in that obviously you get less and less as you go up the grades and that makes sense you know just for drawing purposes so that you're always able to play something even if you don't uh, do that well or in the early game um, but the key thing, the main difference between a starter deck and the rest of them is just the amount of each card that you get. So, for instance, you only get one of these, which is the best card in um, this set, when, for the most part, you'd actually play four of them, so you kind of would need that. But they do give you four of, like, the other grade threes and stuff like that, and four of most other things in this deck. The only other thing I'd mention would be that, um, there are cards in this game called Perfect Guards, so, um, while a typical card would have like that just black shield icon that says 10,000 or 5,000 in it. A perfect card has a gold shield icon that says zero and then it would have an effect that says like if you discard a card this card blocks any attack. And you'd usually use like at least four of those in a, in a, um, in a, uh, in a deck. And this starter deck doesn't have any perfect cards. And so competitive wise you'd want to have four of those in your deck you'd want to definitely focus on a certain um, kind of uh, archetype in this case this is a gold paladin deck and you'd use mainly gold paladin cards you can use like two different kind of clans or something like that i think they're called clans in the deck 
But again, there are effects that specifically reference you using kind of like gold paladins in this deck and so on. Um, and yeah, um, as far as I'm aware, there, there are popular decks in Vanguard, but for the most part, as I said, you know, it's probably one of the easier ones to get into kind of uh, competitively. If you want to like net deck and use the really popular decks, it's going to cost you money, like any a lot of money, like any other card game, because the super rare, the triple rares, and like SPs are going to cost a lot of money if you're not just getting them from packs. Um, but yeah, that's that's the main difference. And then the only other thing would be that the starter deck gives you four criticals, four heals, four stands, and four draw triggers. When I think most competitive decks will actually run a lot more critical triggers to do a lot more damage in the few turns. So like, the aim would be instead of attacking six times to win the game, you'd actually only attack three times and have a much greater chance of getting the uh, critical trigger and win with only three attacks. And th that's one of the keys to this game. Um, and yeah, the, definitely making sure you kind of get the right criticals and stuff like that is good. Some decks won't have much use for stand triggers. Some decks won't need to draw that many cards because of card effects. So yeah, critical triggers are the key. And as I said, you're only allowed to have four heal triggers. And of course, you're going to use them in your deck. Um, but yeah, just perfect guards and more critical triggers would be the main kind of tips to build a more competitive style deck. Um, I don't really think I need to kind of specifically compare this deck to, say, the most popular deck right now. Because the gap isn't as big for like in this game as there is in the other ones like i'd say every other game pokemon magic the gathering and Yu Gi Oh, there's a pretty big gap between starter deck and super competitive deck but not in this case so definitely it's um probably a little bit easier to um get stuff and then the packs themselves I'll, I'll admit i haven't actually opened up any packs just because as i said these cards are kind of <laughs> difficult to um get a hold of you know just anywhere have to order them online and you know can't do that out that often um but i've looked up a lot of stuff online and stuff like that but um yeah it seems in a booster box you get 30 packs every pack has five cards in it and you're guaranteed to get one shiny in it and i don't think that there's a huge like kind of demand that all the competitive decks out there use the triple rare and sp cards to win and that if you don't have them you can't win they do a reasonably good job of actually making it so that there are like common, like for instance, look here, there's a common grade three and it's actually probably one of the more powerful cards in this deck. Probably I actually like it a little bit more than the main card, just because I get to use the effect a bit more than this one. Um, and you know, there are, as I said, then like shiny grade ones and stuff like that. So they do a good job at not just making it the high power cards are the rares and that they do kind of separate it which is pretty good and so it makes it like reasonably like okay to buy booster packs to kind of create decks there are a lot of different clans like there's a lot so you want to be specific about what booster packs you buy for what deck you want but that just requires a little bit of research it's not as bad as buying pokemon <laughs> packs but um i'm just going to end it here before going too long so uh thanks for watching this card fight vanguard video Next time I'm going to do Yu-Gi-Oh, followed by Magic, followed by the other card game video, and last but not least, the kind of um, winners in each of the categories uh, for all these games and decide which one I prefer and stuff like that. So thanks for watching this video, and bye!